Hello, welcome to Energy 142, class number 10. This class is going to be about manipulating hourly data in Excel. So first though, I want to cover a little review. So this is something you've, you've done in the past. Let's just look at um, four schools um, and look at sort of their basics data. So I'm not going to answer these questions for you, but I want you to think about them and you're going to be asked them for homework. So which school or schools should we focus on for energy efficiency? And which school or schools should we focus on for utility bill savings? So just think about that and, um, you know, take a little little bit to think about that. And then, you'll, again, you'll be asked that on homework. Now let's look at load factor. So I'll talk a little bit about this load factor. You can see that, in, for the most part, the blue, the green, and the yellow um, schools dip down the load factor dips down in the summer and then um, dips back up near the uh, the winter months but the red school dips up real big in the in the month of July so with the red school I, I plotted it out for all three years the load factor and in a separate graph so this is something we really want to take a look at when we have an anomaly like this and this is why we do energy accounting to see anomalies like this so what was happening in this when, when the school was 70% load factor? That's a big question we would have to answer. And we definitely, if we were the energy manager, we'd want to take a look at that school, especially if other schools, like in this situation, if other schools are not seeing that big dip. So that's something we could take a look at. Um, maybe equipment's value functioning wrong, or maybe there's construction happening um, around the clock, so maybe that's what's going on. So it's something we could definitely take a look at. And since we can see this with load factor, this sort of leads us right into our hourly um, analysis. Because then if we saw something was wrong with the load factor, then we could start investigating with the hourly utility bill analysis to see what's really going on. So that brings us to the answer to this question, why would we care about hourly utility data? So there's lots of reasons, but I'm going to lay out a few. Um, we really want to be able to look at individual day energy patterns and see where our peak is occurring and when it's occurring so we can mitigate that and lessen our bill. We also want to see if our equipment seems to be shutting off at night. If we think that we're running pretty much no equipment at night, yet we still have a sizable usage at night, that could be a problem. We really want to see what's going on in the building. So there's lots of different reasons we could work with hourly utility data. So here's sort of the goals of um, these two classes. So it's going to be this class and next class. We're going to be able to work with large data sets in Excel because you can imagine if we're looking at hourly data, it's going to be a lot of data. We can find the peak demand days and times and verify if they occur when they should, just like I was just talking about. So obviously, you don't. if your peak in a school is happening at 1 a.m., you know there's probably a problem with the school. And then we want to use a um, software called DView, which will uh, give us a better idea and better graphical representation of the hourly data uh, very quickly. So we can use this very quickly to point out uh, trends and whatnot. So today we're really going to be focusing on being able to work with large data sets in Excel. Um, and you'll see that it's sort of what you get from utilities is not easy to work with. And we're going to learn how to work with it in Excel. So, so let's look at an example of one of these large data sets. So I've blacked out the account number um, just so it's not shown. And if we open up your utility hourly utility data, that's going to be on Blackboard under the learning materials and under some a folder called utility data or, or something to that effect. And then it's either hourly or interval data. So look for your school there and you can download your hourly data there. So we can see we have a lot of information here. And these triple dots say it goes off in both directions in Excel. But let's look just, so this is January 1st, 2011, and it's kilowatt hour. And it turns out in this case, it's every 15 minutes interval data is recorded. So it's not hourly, it's 15 minute data in this case. And so that's the time. So this is going to go on until, you know, until you reach a uh, full 24 hours. So just for January 1st, we have all this, all this data. We have kilowatt hours, power factor, 
and k var h. So in this class, we're not going to worry too much about power factor and k var h. This gets into um, larger when you have industrial facilities or very large commercial facilities they get into play, but we're not going to worry too much about it in this class. Uh, you might learn about that a little later. So really what we're worried about is kilowatt hour. And what we really want to do is use this um, data, but be able to actually manipulate it more easily. So we're going to talk more about that. So let's um, let's talk about the index function in Excel. And then we'll go back to what I just showed. Um, so the index function in Excel returns a value of a certain location in a range of cells. And it takes the form index. You select a range of cells. And then what row number you want and what co column number you want. So let's go back. If we put this formula um, in a cell in the Excel spreadsheet that's... Uh, all the rows and columns are below. And we select all of this data in the data range. And we put 5.5. Five. We'll see what it's going to return. So let's look. So basically, we would select all of this data range. And 5.5 five is going to go five rows down. One, two, three, four, five. And five across. One, two, three, four, five. If we change that to 4 or 5, it's going to go up here because it's still going to go 5 columns across, but only 4 rows down. If we change it to 6, 7, that's 6 rows down, 7 columns across. So index just changes uh, where you're pointing out in the Excel spreadsheet. And we can sort of use this to pick out um, different numbers. We'll try to pick out the kilowatt hours. So in order to have useful data, we're going to want something that looks like this, where we have a huge long line of data and a huge long line of kilowatt hours. So it's not broken up at all. So we can easily plot it and easily manipulate it and easily do things with it. So we need to learn, we need to figure out how we get this from the current data. So we want to go from something like this to something like this. Okay, so um, I'll detail um, that in an Excel video later, but what I want to dig into now is how you use index to convert what is below to a string of data. So again, just remember, now we could select a different range, and if we have index 2, 3, that's going to be this number here, the 0.941695. If we had index 4, 5, that'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that would be the 8.09. And if we had 1, 4, it would be 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, the 9.61. So that's how index works. So before we really start trying to figure out how to do this, we need to analyze some patterns, and that's going to give us more helpful um, hint as to how to do this. So let's think about this. If we have this, how are x and y related? So take a second and pause the video here and try and see if you can get this answer right. Okay. So x and y are related by y equals 2 times x. And this is sort of a simple one. So let's try the next one. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can get this one correct. Okay. So y equals 2x plus 1 in this case. So now let's try this again. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can get this pattern. In this case, y equals 3x minus 1. All right, last one. Try to get this one. y equals 10x plus 5. So what we're going to do, in, and I'll go over this in the video, is we're going to try to fi figure out a pattern that's going to be needed for um, the row number here and the column number here to just pick out the kilowatt hours. So it's not going to be an easy task. So I'll have an Excel video um, as the next video in the series to go over the solution.